Winning the lottery seems like a dream come true, but it's the start of a nightmare for some. From rags to riches, then back to rags, discover the top 10 lottery winners who lost it all as quickly as they won it, and the jaw-dropping reasons behind their downfalls. In 2002, Jack Whitaker, a West Virginia businessman, struck gold with a Powerball jackpot win of a staggering $314.9 million, the largest single-ticket jackpot in history at the time. But his journey from multi-millionaire to bankruptcy was as rapid as it was tragic. Whitaker chose the lump sum payment, pocketing $113 million after taxes, but his fortune turned sour. Within four years, his life had spiraled due to a series of personal tragedies and a string of legal and personal problems. His extravagant spending habits didn't help. Whitaker was known for his generous handouts and lavish gifts, but also for frequenting strip clubs and casinos where he reportedly splurged millions. The curse of his fortune didn't stop at financial losses. Whitaker faced personal tragedies, including the death of his granddaughter, which he attributed to the curse of the lottery win. His daughter also passed away under mysterious circumstances. Legal woes piled up alongside his personal losses, with numerous lawsuits depleting his wealth further. By 2006, Whitaker claimed he was broke, with his once vast fortune wiped out. His story didn't see a turnaround. Instead, it continued on a downward trajectory with continued legal issues and personal losses. Whitaker's life post-bankruptcy remained fraught with challenges, a stark contrast to the hope and excitement that accompanied his initial win. Evelyn Adams' story is a cautionary tale of how a fortune can disappear into thin air when addiction takes hold. In the mid-1980s, Adams hit the jackpot not once, but twice in the New Jersey lottery amassing a total of $5.4 million, a sum that would be worth much more today. However, within a mere five years, her windfall had evaporated, leaving her with nothing but memories of wealth. Adam's downfall was primarily due to her gambling addiction. The casinos of Atlantic City became her second home, where the flashing lights and the clinking sound of slot machines drowned out the reality of her dwindling fortune. She poured her winnings into the slots and gaming tables, hoping for a high that never lasted. The thrill of winning the lottery was replaced by the constant chase for the next big win at the casinos, which sadly never came. Her addiction was compounded by a series of high-risk investments that did not pan out. With each bad decision, her pile of cash shrank until there was nothing left. By the early 1990s, Adams had lost it all and found herself in financial ruin. The world of glitz and glamour she had been a part of had vanished, leaving her to face the harsh realities of life without a financial safety net. Post-bankruptcy, Adams lived a life far removed from the one she had known as a millionaire. She faced financial struggles and lived a much quieter life, away from the public eye. There were no more headlines or public fascination, just the day-to-day -day effort to get by. In 2004, the Hamilton, Ontario resident Sharon Tiravasi's life was transformed overnight when she won a staggering $10 million from the Lotto Super 7. However, by 2013, just nine years later, Tiravasi had returned to a life of living paycheck to paycheck, her lottery fortune a distant memory. Tiravasi's heart was as big as her jackpot. She spent her winnings on generous gifts and loans to family and friends, a gesture of kindness that would contribute to her financial downfall. She bought houses for her loved ones, cars for her friends, and extravagant gifts for herself. The money seemed endless, and so did the parties, the designer clothes, and the exotic trips. However, the lavish lifestyle was not sustainable. Her uncontrolled spending was a significant factor in her financial demise. The big houses and fancy cars came with upkeep costs, taxes, and insurance that slowly drained her resources. The loans she gave out were rarely paid back, and the investments she made did not flourish as hoped. The millions that had once seemed like an inexhaustible resource dwindled until there was nothing left. By the time Tiravasi realized the gravity of her situation, it was too late. The money was gone, and she was back to square one. She took a job, riding the bus to work, her sports cars long gone, and struggled to make ends meet. The financial roller coaster ride had come to an abrupt stop, and the reality of budgeting and saving was now her daily routine. Sharon Tirabasi's story is not one of tragedy, but a lesson in the value of financial literacy. 
It's a reminder that wealth, without the knowledge of how to manage it, can be as fleeting as a lottery ticket. Today, she lives a life far removed from the one she briefly enjoyed, as we know the fact that money can buy comfort, but not necessarily happiness or security. In June 1997, Billy Bob Harrell, a Pentecostal preacher and Home Depot stalker, struck fortune when he won $31 million in the Texas lotto. His windfall, however, would bring only a brief period of joy before leading to a tragic end. Harold quickly set about using his winnings to help others, donating tithes to the church, buying houses for his family, and making sure those around him no longer had to struggle. His heart led his financial decisions, and while his intentions were pure, his lack of financial management experience soon became evident. Within just 20 months, Harold's life had taken a drastic turn. The money that once seemed like a blessing had become a curse. His generosity had been taken advantage of, and his inability to say no led to a cascade of loans that were never repaid. The financial strain was compounded by a series of investments that did not pan out, and the constant requests for money took a personal toll. Harold's story took a darker turn as he found himself embroiled in a dispute with the company that promised to pay him a steady stream of lottery winnings in exchange for a lump sum. The deal turned sour, and the financial pressure intensified. In despair and with his fortune depleted, Harold tragically took his own life in May 1999, less than two years after his lottery win. His story is often cited as a cautionary tale about the need for sound financial advice and the importance of managing newfound wealth with caution. In 1993, Janet Lee, a wig maker from South Korea, found herself in a world of unimaginable wealth after winning $18 million in the Illinois lottery. Her story is not one of reckless spending on lavish luxuries, but of a heart so generous that it ultimately led to her financial undoing. Lee's winnings were not squandered on extravagant homes or flashy cars. Instead, she channeled her newfound wealth into the causes she held dear. She made substantial donations to educational programs, community services, and political organizations. Her contributions were so significant that she gained recognition and even had lunch with then-President Bill Clinton. However, Lee's philanthropy, while noble, was not sustainable. She gave away millions to various charities and poured funds into political campaigns, believing in the power of her contributions to make a difference. On top of her donations, Lee also accrued substantial credit debt, a move that would further strain her financial stability. By 2001, just eight years after her lottery win, Lee filed for bankruptcy. The millions had evaporated, and she reported only $700 left to her name. The debts had piled up, and the income stream she once had from the lottery winnings could not cover the outflow. Following her bankruptcy, Lee stepped away from the public eye. She returned to a more modest lifestyle, far removed from the philanthropic endeavors that once defined her days as a millionaire. Her story, while less sensational than those of some other lottery winners, is a sobering reminder of the delicate balance between generosity and financial prudence. In 1989, Willie Hurt's life changed dramatically when he won a $3.1 million jackpot in the Michigan Lottery. It seemed like a dream come true, but this dream quickly spiraled into a nightmare. Within a mere two years, Hurt found himself bankrupt, his fortune dissipated by a combination of personal turmoil and destructive habits. The descent began with a painful divorce, an event that not only took an emotional toll on Hurt, but also a substantial financial one. The settlement, coupled with legal fees, carved a significant chunk out of his lottery winnings. But the financial bleed did not stop there. Hurt's situation was exacerbated by a crippling addiction to crack cocaine, a substance that consumed not only his wealth, but also his well-being. The addiction led to a rapid and tragic depletion of his funds. Money that could have secured his future and that of his family was instead funneled into sustaining a destructive habit. The cost of substance abuse, both in terms of direct spending on drugs and the indirect costs associated with it, such as further legal troubles and health issues, proved to be devastating. By 1991, Hurt had nothing to show for his lottery win. The wealth that had once seemed a guarantee of security and comfort had vanished, leaving him to face the consequences of his actions. In the aftermath, Hurt retreated from the public eye, and details of his life post-bankruptcy are sparse. 
It's believed he sought help for his addiction, but whether he found long-term recovery remains unknown. In 1993, Suzanne Mullins hit the jackpot, winning a $4.2 million slice of the Virginia Lottery. The win promised a life of ease and security, but within five short years, Mullins found herself in a financial quagmire, one that would lead her down the path of bankruptcy. The trouble began with a decision that seemed sensible at the time. Mullins opted to receive her winnings in annual installments, but when her family was hit with unexpected health care costs, the yearly payments weren't enough to cover the expenses. In response, she did what many might consider. She took out loans, using her future lottery payments as collateral. However, the terms of these loans were crippling. The interest compounded, and as Mullins struggled to keep up, the debt snowballed out of control. To make matters worse, the lottery rules changed, allowing her to receive her remaining winnings in a lump sum, which she did in the hopes of managing her debts better. But the damage was done. The loans had become a gaping financial maw, and the lump sum was quickly consumed by the debts and ongoing medical expenses. By 1998, Mullins was unable to make even the interest payments. The lending company sued, and the court ruled in the company's favor. But by then, Mullins had no assets left to claim. Her lottery winnings had evaporated, and she was left with nothing but a trail of debt. The years that followed were marred by legal battles and financial hardship. It's a sobering reminder that a windfall can be as fleeting as it is fortuitous, and without prudent planning, it can lead to ruin just as quickly as it can to riches. At the tender age of 16, Callie Rogers' life was transformed overnight when she won a staggering 1.9 million pounds in the UK National Lottery in 2003. Young and with little guidance on managing such a vast sum, Rogers embarked on a spending spree that would ultimately lead to her financial downfall. With the world seemingly at her feet, Rogers indulged in the luxuries that her newfound wealth could afford. She spent lavishly on cosmetic surgeries, high-end fashion, and exuberant parties. Her generosity also knew no bounds as she showered loved ones with gifts and financial aid. However, the lifestyle that the lottery winnings afforded was not sustainable, and the pitfalls of sudden wealth soon became apparent. Rogers' expenditures on drugs escalated, and the toxic combination of youth, inexperience, and wealth proved to be a recipe for disaster. The money that once seemed inexhaustible began to dwindle at an alarming rate. By the time she was 22, six years after her win, Rogers had spent nearly all her fortune and faced the grim reality of bankruptcy. The journey through financial ruin was a harsh teacher for Rogers. She emerged from the experience with a newfound appreciation for a more modest lifestyle. Embracing motherhood, Rogers found solace and purpose in raising her children, a role that brought stability and contentment far removed from the fleeting pleasures her winnings once bought. Today, Callie Rogers advocates for age restrictions on lottery winnings, hoping that her story can serve as a lesson to others. Curtis Sharp's life became a whirlwind of excitement and excess when he won $5 million in the New York Lottery in 1982. Dubbed the $5 million man, Sharp was known for his dapper suits and wide-brimmed hats, becoming something of a celebrity. He lived a high life with luxury cars and suits to match his larger-than-life personality. However, the dream quickly spiraled into a cautionary tale. Sharp's wealth attracted friends and opportunities that were only sometimes in his best interest. He invested in ventures that promised much but delivered little, and his two divorces further strained his finances. The lifestyle that seemed so glamorous on the surface was eating away at his fortune beneath. Within five years, the man who had become the face of lottery success was facing bankruptcy. The money that had seemed like a never-ending resource was gone, spent on the trappings of a life that was unsustainable. His story became one of the most vivid examples of how not to manage a windfall. In the aftermath, Curtis Sharp did not disappear from the public eye. Instead, he turned his misfortune into a platform for advocacy. He began speaking about the dangers of irresponsible gambling and the importance of financial planning. Sharp's message was clear. Money management is crucial, and without it, even the largest fortunes can disappear. Today, Curtis Sharp lives a life far removed from the glitz and glamour that his lottery win once brought. He didn't regain his wealth, but he found a different kind of value in sharing his story and helping others avoid the pitfalls that befell him. 
Michael Carroll's Rags to Riches to Rags story is a roller coaster tale of excess and loss. In 2002, at the age of just 19, Carroll won a whopping 9.7 million pounds in the UK National Lottery. Dubbed the Lotto Lout by the British press, his win became as notorious as his subsequent fall from grace. Carroll, a former bin man from Norfolk, was catapulted into the public eye, and his life transformed overnight. However, his wealth was squandered almost as quickly as it came. Over the next eight years, Carroll became infamous for his excessive lifestyle. His days were filled with lavish partying, ill-advised investments, and generous handouts to friends and family. His mansion in Norfolk became the site of demolition derbies, and he reportedly spent millions on drugs, gambling, and prostitution. The King of Chavs, as he was also known, seemed to have an insatiable appetite for self-destruction. His fortune dwindled as he continued to spend without thought for the future. By 2010, Carroll had declared bankruptcy, with his vast fortune reduced to nothing. He was reported to have taken up employment in a biscuit factory, earning 200 pounds a week, a stark contrast to his lottery win. In the years that followed, Carroll's life took on a quieter rhythm. He moved to Scotland and took various jobs, including a stint at a slaughterhouse. He claimed to have no regrets about the way he spent his fortune, stating that he had lived a decade most could only dream of. His return to a modest lifestyle serves as a humbling end to a tale that once captivated and cautioned a nation against the pitfalls of sudden wealth. These experiences underline a common thread. Without prudent financial planning and responsible wealth management, fortunes can dissolve as quickly as they materialize. This narrative isn't just about the loss of wealth, it's a profound commentary on the psychological impact of winning the lottery. As viewers reflect on these stories, the ultimate takeaway is clear. Financial literacy is not just a skill, but a safeguard against the unpredictable tides of fortune.